Hello and welcome to B5 The Living Body. Uh, this is the very first lesson on skeletons and for today's lesson we're going to be looking at um, for the A grade to explain how bo bones are actually formed, for the B grade to describe the structure of long bones and for the C grade to recall that there are different types of skeleton. We're going to take these in order starting with the C grade and going working up towards that A grade. So things you must know from this lesson in order for you to be able to answer the questions when you come into the classroom, uh, the first thing is about the different types of skeletons and what they are made from. Second thing is about the advantages and drawbacks of the different types of skeletons. Uh, the third thing is the structure of the long bones. And the fourth thing, thing is how bones it actually forms. First thing we're going to have a look at are skeletons. Um, now in some organisms uh, a skeleton is not actually needed as you can see um, but most of us actually have the endoskeleton um, which is the one at the bottom because we're mammals and obviously there is another one there fish but it's made of slightly different material um, some organisms have an exoskeleton exo meaning on the outside so endo internal exo on the outside so what we're going to do first of all is just have a look at vertebrates which have that internal skeleton, the endoskeleton, which is just us. Um, obviously it's made out of bone and it's very, very hard. Um, some invertebrates, such as arthropods, have that external skeleton and that's called the exoskeleton. Okay, external exo. Some invertebrates, such as worms, have that soft hydrostatic skeleton that consists of that fluid-filled cavity which allows the animal to move. So a hydrostatic, basically, is just filled full of water, hydro, and it's using that pressure that actually fills up. We're going to have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of those different skeletons. We're not going to deal with the um, hydroskeleton in that much detail, but the endoskeleton versus the exoskeleton are the ones we're going to have a look at. The endoskeletons will grow with the individual bones, okay? So they will grow as the individual grows. Endoskeletons also have those joints and they allow that flexibility to take place. The endoskeletons are made from living tissue that produce that blood cells. So as you are aware, we've got the bone marrow, the internal bit of your bone, and that produces your white blood cells. Exoskeletons, on the other hand, uh, mollusks are a typical example of these, and they're surrounded by this calcium carbonate exoskeleton, or shell. Um, so shells that you normally see around the beach, they are those exoskeletons. It's a hard tissue, it's excreted from the body at stages throughout the life, and it grows with the rest of the animals. Arthropods, insects, have that jointed exoskeleton called that cuticle. That surrounds the soft tissue as well, but it's not made out of the same material. It's made out of a protein, and that's called chitin, or chitin, that produces flexibility and strength. Those exoskeletons provide the organisms with protection and support. But what we do need to have a look at are the disadvantages of that. So arthropods, the insects, are quite rigid. Therefore, that animal can only grow until it fills its existing exoskeleton. After that, it actually has to molt. And at those stages, it's not actually hard enough on the inside, so you can see how it's vulnerable to predators at that time. So this is actually called ecdysis, and that's shedding of the skin. That exoskeleton is heavy, so it can limit how large that arthropod can grow, and that's why insects are generally very, very small. Endoskeletons, on the other hand, that internal framework, such as us, is that rigid structure. In most vertebrates, the endoskeleton is made up of bone, although we do have some cartilage. And that cartilage is obviously on the tip of your nose, outer ears, um, and right at the ends of your long bones. And we're going to be looking at that in a little bit more detail because that's where the growth actually takes place. Some fish have got that internal skeleton that consists of only cartilage, and some consists of bone and cartilage and some just bone. So we've got different fishes as well. Uh, why do we have that skeleton? Well, many functions. The first one is protection. Obviously our, our head is protected, our cranium protects our brain and it protects that delicate parts. So we've also got our ribs which is our, protecting our thoracic region. Um, it's shape, so it gives us our shape, it determines our size by how big the skeleton actually is and it supports that muscles and organs so it allows that 
um, movement to take place. So support movement, because it is supporting those muscles, it actually causes that movement to take place because those muscles are attached to the bones. And we'll be actually looking at that in our next lesson. So things you must know, let's go back to our objectives of today's lesson. So about the different types of skeletons. So hopefully you know about the three different types, see if you can recall them, and what they are made of. So think about those materials that we've just discussed and about the advantages and drawbacks of the different types of skeletons. What we're going to go on to now is the structure of the long bones and how that bone is actually, we're about halfway through. So parts of a long bone. Now, as you can see, this is a structure that you need to know about. And the one that's actually highlighted at this moment in time is right at the top and the bottom, the epiphysis. The epiphysis is the rounded end of the bone. And it actually is where the growth takes place. So what we're going to have a look at, and hopefully I'll just be able to highlight it here, is this. The epithelial line is where the growth takes place. And the other important thing about this is the cartilage. Now, the cartilage is actually at both ends, the cartilage at the top and also at the bottom, the end plate. Now, what happens here is that it protects the end of that bone. It's also involved in growth, as we're going to have a look at later on. So, diaphys, this long bone here, is actually where the major support is actually taking place. And in the middle of it, the medulla cav cavity, is where the yellow bone marrow sits. And what that does is, well, it's got two functions. It stores fat, but it's also involved in those uh, white blood cells and making the white blood cells. Okay. Bone growth. Well, we did mention that growth plate earlier on. And the growth plate is where the growth takes place, right near the end. It's also at both ends here. And before growth takes place, this area here is actually made up of cartilage. And it's the cartilage which goes into making the bone. So the cartilage growth areas, here and here, get turned into bone. And as the organism gets bigger, as the bone get increases, well, all that happens is this process called ossification takes place where the cells actually become ossified. Now, what we're also going to have a look at is bones. Now, bones are very strong, but if you knock them, they can fracture. And fracture just means break. And there are different types of fracture that we're going to have a look at. The first one of these is going to be that green stick fracture, then the simple fracture, and then the compound fracture. So as we've said, they are very strong, but they can be fractured by those sharp knocks. So fractures are hard tissue injuries. The bone can either crack or it can break. It can be dangerous to move. So therefore, what you should do is just keep them as they are. But that's obviously going into health. and So our fractures, we've simply got our simple fracture. You may not even know if you have a simple fracture. As you can see, it is just a fracture that takes place of the bone, but because the bone plates are next to each other, the skin's not broken, you may not even know whether or not you've fractured it. However, if you have a compound fracture, the skin is likely to be broken, and part of that bone will be sticking out. We've also got the green stick fracture. Now the green stick is when it's just cracked on one side. So this one, is not as severe as the simple and the compound. Let's have a look at a bit more detail. The green stick fracture, all this is, is when the bone is bent, it's not broken. Children with rickets are prone to this. So think about the vitamin which is needed for rickets, so that, uh, which are, are, is needed, but if you don't have it, then it causes rickets. The bone is bent, but it's not broken, so it's not gone all the way through. Our simple fracture, on the other hand, is when the bone is broken, but the skin is still intact. So it's cleanly broken all the way across. These types of breaks can require pins to heal, but they are usually the quickest to heal. We've then got this one, which is our compound fracture. As you can see here, right down at the bottom, this is our compound fracture. Common in high impact sports, such as football. 
It involves that bone snapping all the way through and breaking through the skin. And it can be fatal because it's going to be off, obviously it leads to blood loss as well. Sometimes they call this an open fracture. The broken ends of the bone will stick out through that skin. If you don't know which fracture you've got, the doctors will use x-rays to look at that damage done to any broken bones before treating it. And some people, as you get older, develop something called osteoporosis or soft bones, and they are more susceptible to fractures, and they may happen just in April. So therefore, the bones have to repair themselves. Cartilage and bone are susceptible to infection, as they are those living tissues. If a tissue is healthy, it can fight infection and undergo growth and repair. However, over time, bones can become weaker as the body becomes less able to repair itself. So as we've said, that's a condition called osteoporosis. It causes those bones to become less dense and more prone to fractures. Generally, it affects more women than men just because of the hormones that um, um, are an imbalance during the menopause. So things you must know. So we've obviously gone through the, about the different types of skeletons and what they're made from, about the disadvantages and drawbacks of those different types of skeletons, but now we've looked at the structure of those long bones and how bone is actually formed. Our targets for that C grade to recall that there are different types of skeleton, so hopefully you should be able to recall those three different types and also look at the advantages and disadvantages of each of them. Describe the structure of those long bones. So what is the bone marrow? What is that tough outer membrane, the coating of that bone? What covers the ends, the cartilage, and why is it there? And explain how those bones are formed from the first bit, the cartilage growth areas, all the way up to when we actually have that developed bone.